from shore bombs flying over Ashburn Alley to dreams of another red October. There's nothing quite like the electric atmosphere of opening day in Philadelphia. Hello and welcome. I'm Don Bell, your guide through our Phillies opening day special first pitch. For the next hour, we'll have everything you need to know for the start of the 2024 season. And stay tuned, because later, we will re-air an exclusive interview with Phillies legend Charlie Manuel. So sit back and relax as we dive into the heart of opening day excitement with First Pitch. This year is about one thing for the Phillies, getting back to the World Series. I spoke with reliever Orion Kirkering and new infielder Whit Merrifield about that goal. The Phillies fell short a year ago, but that is where their focus remains. What's the vibe like in there, knowing how close you came and, and trying to get back to that place? Just everyone's super hungry to get there, actually, and finish the job this year and just be able to go from the get-go instead of like that slow start that I know some guys have said we've had in a while, but just be able to just jump from game one ready to go to all the way till probably game 180, whatever it might be. You're a veteran guy who's been around. You've been an all-star. Um, coming to Philadelphia, what is your expectation? What are you hoping to, to do this year, hoping to even prove this year? Hoping to win a World Series. Um, it's why ultimately I chose this place is because I think this team has as good a chance of anybody, if not the best chance, to, to ho hoist that trophy at the end of the year. And um, that's what our focus is, and that's what we're going to try to do. Kirkering became an overnight sensation with that power slider. He's going to play a key role out of the bullpen. And Whit Merrifield's been around. He's been an all-star. He's going to play a big role as well off the bench. There has only been one game seven in Philly's playoff history, and they lost it. That was against the Arizona Diamondbacks last October in the NLCS. It's now a new year, and they're trying to turn the page. Pat Gallen caught up with the fellas at spring training in Clearwater to talk about that moment and moving on. I think we could have, should have, you know, won and this and that for sure. I think we had a really good team and um, could argue we had the best team, but that's not how the game works. I mean, the, you got to win, you got to execute, and, and uh, you know, I tip my cap to the Diamondbacks because they played well. I mean, you want to brush it to the side, right? But uh, I don't know if we'll ever kind of get over that that feeling of needing one more game three times. And uh, yeah, I don't think that feeling is ever going to go away. But the best you could do is, is go out and uh, get back there and, and make sure that doesn't ever happen again. As we near the start of the regular season, this Phillies roster is stacked and it is healthy. They've added to it. A former All-Star is going to come off the bench and the rotation is as good as any in the major leagues. And it is the stars on the roster that will obviously carry this team to where they want to go. This is a veteran-laden squad, one that has six players with a hundred million dollar contract. And where they want to go is back to the World Series, something that eluded them last year in a crushing NLCS defeat to the Diamondbacks. But the roster looks eerily similar, and shortstop Trey Turner thinks that's a very good thing. I don't think I've ever been on a team that's had this many guys returning. I think we have our literal same yep. team. Yep. Yeah, so, I mean, I've been on really good teams where the core is back and, you know, maybe 60% of the team's back, but it feels like 100% uh, of the team's back, and I, th I think that's a good thing. That's what you want. You want that chemistry and, and uh, those same faces in the clubhouse, and I think we've got a great group, but not only just baseball players, but great people. So I'm um, excited for this year. Trey Turner says he's excited and looking forward to going back north to get this season underway. And he's looking for a fast start, something that did not happen last year until, as he said, everything clicked when the fan base, of course, got involved. The term <laughs> forgive and forget has an origin that dates back to the 1300s, but it's much easier to say than do. After coming up short in the playoffs last year, the Phillies had to deal with that during the winter. Pat Gallen is with the team in Clearwater, Florida with more. Not to bring up the bad, but this is the last time we saw the Phils in real baseball, a crushing loss to the Arizona Diamondbacks in the NLCS. Now the good news, the same team that has made consecutive playoff runs is back, but what are their goals? How do you look at this regular season? I mean, I know 162, you got to take it a game at a time, but does it feel like a, a World Series or bust? situation I mean I feel like that's always your your thought going in is is I mean this team's built for for those playoffs and, and those runs and um, I mean even compared to last year Rangers healthy um, the guys aren't in the WBC and and everyone's here together and, and Bryce is healthy to start the year and 
Uh, I think we're definitely in a better spot, healthier spot, and we haven't started good the past couple of years, and, and that's a big thing is we want to start fast. And um, I mean, it feels like last year we started 0-4, 0-5, and, and, and we look up and we're 10 games back, and um, it's, it's something you don't want to do. And uh, yeah, try to get off on the right foot this time. Stott said he doesn't shoot for individual numbers. He doesn't write them down, but overall, he just wants to get into the season healthy, and it looks like this roster up and down is pretty much that with the regular season on tap from March 28th. The season hasn't even started, and yet the Phillies are already serving up unforgettable moments for their biggest fans. Alicia Roberts explains. We were like, oh my gosh, that's the Phillies. Sunday afternoon, the Severino family took in a spring training game in Clearwater, complete with a few autographs from Phillies players, including Bryson Stott, JT Romuto, and Brandon Marsh. But they had no idea this day was about to get even better. We were out to eat at a restaurant and all the Phillies started walking by our tables. 11 year old Chase and his family happened to be out to dinner when the team walked into the same restaurant. I had a, my Schwilber jersey on and and he walked by, I waved at him. Chase says that's when Kyle Schwarber stopped and came back to say hello. We didn't really want to bother them, so we just, when they walked by, we just like waved and he was just saying like, nice jersey. And then he just turned around and was like, you guys want a picture? Kyle, Chase, and Nolan snapped this picture together, something Chase says he'll never forget. It was like the craziest moment because he's my favorite player and it was just amazing. Mom Stephanie posted the photo on Twitter and said she She's already received messages from baseball fans across the country. They both play sports and I always tell them like the most important thing is being a good person, being a good sport and to see the players that they look up to take the time. It means a lot as a mom. Dad Greg agrees and is grateful this trip even happened. The funny thing was the first day our flights were canceled, so we were this close from canceling yeah, the entire trip. trip. Yeah. And then yesterday just made it all worth worth a while. As for Chase, he's also thankful for Kyle's kindness that night, creating a moment that's truly picture perfect. It's going to be crazy. Like every time he hits a home run, like it's already my favorite part of every game. And now that we're going to be every time he hits it, we're going to be like, we, we met him. <laughs> Alicia Roberts, CBS News, Philadelphia. Pat Gallen is at spring training in Clearwater, Florida, and he caught up with a Phillies World Series champ. Here in Clearwater, it's about celebrating the incredible team they'll put on the field in 2024, but also honoring past legends. I got a chance to link up with one of the unsung heroes of that 2008 World Series title team, Joe Blanton. What do people want to talk to you about? What's like the one thing they always bring up? Choose the, the home run <laughs> in 08. That's, uh, that's usually immediately. You're like, oh, I was at that game. Yeah, or, yeah. or how was that? It's usually, that, that's usually the immediate questions I get. It's, it's that. How many times have you rewatched that, by the way? Not very often. No, I, no, I remember, uh, I don't know, it was a couple years ago. I put it up, put it on the screen and I didn't realize how bad the video was in 08, yeah, right. first off. Uh, but my son's 11, so it was a couple years ago. I showed him, he was maybe nine or so. Okay. I showed him and you know, I was like, oh, look at the crowd. And yeah, and he goes, swing. he looked at me and goes, that's it? <laughs> so, kids put it in perspective real quick. If you get to pitch in a World Series, you're in rarefied air. But if you're a pitcher that happens to hit a huge home run in a World Series game, well, then you become a legend, and Joe Blanton is still that in Philadelphia. Owner John Middleton once again used his cash app, and pitcher Zach Wheeler was on the receiving end. He has agreed to a three-year contract extension worth $126 million that starts next season. He'll get paid $42 million a season, the most in team history, and fourth largest in baseball for a pitcher. Philly's president of baseball operations, Dave Dombrowski, says wheels is worth the money. Zach is one of the best pitchers in the game of baseball. I don't think I could think of another individual I'd rather have take the ball in a big game uh, for a club than Zach. Like I said, it's, it's just like no other. And, you know, the, the, the fans bring, um, you know, the atmosphere to the ballpark, and we just feed off of that. And, you know, like I said, I've enjoyed my time here, and I look forward to, you know, four more years. We know that the Phillies organization and team is basically like a big family, and the same is true for the fans. Families everywhere here at Baycare Ballpark. I'm so excited. Can't wait for this year. It's going to be phenomenal. Is, phen is phenomenal 
World Series title phenomenal? Absolutely. We also found some brand new fans. Best friends, two weeks apart, first Phillies game? Yeah. First Phillies game, yeah. That's amazing. How, how, are they, how are they liking it so far? Are you doing all right? I love it. You love it? Good job. <laughs> but we did bump into some confused fans. Always been a Phillies fan and a Steelers fan. Shh. We have to, I'm sorry, we're going to have to cut that. You're going to get a lot of booze here. And well-dressed fans. Rich and Ricky Ciotti made the trip from Marlton. They're confident in a deep playoff run. And Ricky is confident about who's got better hair, you or Bryce Harper? Uh, I might have to uh, go myself on that one. Yeah. It's a close call. It Bryce is. has a hell of a head of hair, too. He really does. With this, look at that. And I also found my own family, like, really. My sister Jenna and her family in Clearwater. You're a huge Phillies fan, I know that, because I grew up with you. Um, are you still sad about the way last year ended? Um, no, I'm not at all, actually. No? No. Mm -mm. I think it was a great run. How do you think it's going to go this year? I don't know. Brian, what's your predictions? He's got a lot of predictions. I say they're going to take it all. And my niece Amelia had this to say. My uncle is the greatest reporter. Oh, that's so perfect. Great job. The Darren Dalton Foundation, created in honor of the late Phillies catcher, held a celebrity guest bartending event in Clearwater, and our Pat Gallen was there. The Darren Dalton Foundation taking over the Tiki Bar and lots of Phillies alumni in the house today to help raise money on behalf of the great Phil's catcher. The goal of the foundation is to provide financial help for those suffering from primary malignant brain tumors. Dutch passed away in 2017 from that very disease. But one thing that stands out about Dutch's legacy, love. I miss walking in a room, you know, a Dutch and, get, and getting that hug and kiss on the cheek. He was so, he welcomed you into his family. Okay. As, and that close to be that close to him. And, and, and that shows you what type of person he, he was. He was so incredibly giving. And, and in the same vein that people are here for him, he would be there for the people if he was still around. And, and that's just how he was. He, he wanted to constantly be near and around his fans because he considered him family. So we also talked to some of those legends about this year's Philly squad. This is a team that is itching to get back to the postseason and prove they can bring a title to Philadelphia. These guys really truly believe, not and, and not boastfully, but they believe that they're a good team. Sure. And they believe that they should have fared better last year, and I think they're kind of angry about it. We can't be satisfied with going as far as we did last year. We, we got we to gotta take the next step. Sure. step. It's been two years. I mean, the first year I'll give Houston beat us yep. in the World Series. Last year, not taking nothing away from the Diamondbacks, they're very athletic. We have to win that series, and we just didn't get it done. Will the Phillies win their first World Series title since 2008? That's a tough question. But you know what's tougher? Answering a gallon of questions. Our Pat Gallon puts the guys to the test at spring training in Clearwater, Florida. You're stuck on an island with one teammate. Who would you want it to be? Probably Bomer. Yeah, why's that? He seems to have a, a good grasp of the world and the surroundings, and I feel like he would be he would know how to survive. Soup or salad? I'm more of a soup because I feel like you, you can have a better like area to pick from between like French onion. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else. Is that your number one? Is a French onion? I think French onion is yeah. just anywhere like tomato yeah, soup. You can like a little bisque. Yeah. Little bisque thing. Go all over the all, all over the place. Favorite sports movie? Probably. Probably remember the Titans. That's great. Great choice. Would you rather be GM, manager, hitting coach? Oh jeez. Uh, is there D? Is there none, of, none of the above. <laughs> none of the above. Probably manager. Uh, favorite place to go in Philly so far? Have you gotten a chance to explore? I wouldn't say a whole lot, but there's a couple of good Italian places like uh, Giuseppe and Sons. Yeah, all right. Um, I think that's really it. I think uh, Del Sandro's, the okay. cheesesteak place. Would you rather have to catch nine innings or pitch nine innings? Pitch. Whoever signs up to catch. That's crazy, right? That's some brain damage and early on. does it like 10,000 innings a He's year. a wrestler. He's a wrestler. He's got some brain damage. What's the story of your number? Is there one? So I think 50, they just gave it to me. When I was growing up as a kid, yeah. I've always had like a four in my number. So like Little League, I was 14. Okay. High school, I was 24. Like that. Uh, college, I was 34. Then like travel ball was like 44 during uh, like when I was up in the Cape. So it's kind of like the extra kind of like momentum is like that four kind stick of. with 50? I works. think so, yeah. Ryan, thanks so much. Absolutely, Great appreciate it. And we first met our next guest last year when he was just beginning his service training. Remember this guy? We're going to show him to you now. 
Major, yeah, there's our little guy. The service pup has been working with the Phillies throughout the Warrior Canine Connection. He'll eventually be paired with a military veteran. So what's Major been up to since we last saw him? Well, guess what? He's here joining us in the studio with Jen Desher, program manager and trainer with the Warrior Canine Connection, and Michelle Devick Harris with the Philly. So good morning to you guys. Good morning. Hey, and look at how good he's such a good boy. <laughs> he is. Major, it's good to see you. Yeah. Good boy. Well, you guys, when we last saw him last year, we're seeing him again. <laughs> he's, not his, he's not a puppy anymore, right? So tell me a little bit about where he is now in his training and what's been going on. Sure. So Major actually just turned a year back in February. Mm -hmm. um, so since about five months old, he's been incorporated into our mission-based trauma recovery program, which is where we have veterans come in and train with us and assist us in the training as part of their own therapeutic rehabilitation um, and then he's also been working on some more of his advanced trainings to kind of get him ready for his future career yeah and major's been at the stadium right he has yes. okay so yes. tell me what that's been like <laughs> and how, how he's been like kind of you know received by everyone so Jen trains him all day and then she brings him to the ballpark <laughs> for fun so we started bringing him in last year at the start of every homestand and he's built quite a rapport with the players they're happy to see him uh, particularly Kyle Schwarber and JT Real Muto and then he also stops in in, uh, manager Rob Thompson's office every time Rob <laughs> waits for us to come in he comes in he sits on Rob's couch which he's not supposed to do but we let it's it slide like, I'm, so. gonna, I'm good yes. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like privileged yeah so he's he's made himself at home in the dugout and around the clubhouse so. all right now we also know you guys we understand that you guys are going to be attending or you got to attend a special screening last night for mm -hmm. the new movie Arthur the King yes. so let's talk a little bit about that and the significance of that the movie isn't just about a service dog but it's a true story about you know a similar unbreakable bond that a dog can have in a person's life. So talk to us a little bit about that screening and just the thought behind that film, what you guys thought about it. Sure, so I mean the screening was wonderful. We were so, you know, grateful to be able to be invited to that, and we were able to bring some of our, vet of our veterans along as well. So the movie conveys um, a strong animal-human bond and how, you know, while performing jobs together, they're able to strengthen that bond. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's the same thing that we do with our dog training. Um, so whether you're a working canine, a service dog, um, a therapy dog, that human-animal bond is the glue that kind of makes it all work. Yeah, and tell us just lastly why it's so important just to have dogs like Major, especially with your program, and how they will be helping out someone eventually in the future. Sure, so our dogs are specifically trained for Warrior Canine Connection. Our dogs are trained for um, veterans. Um, we are training them for mobility, PTSD, and TBI, mitigating symptoms of PTSD and TBI. Mm -hmm. So they're able to give the veterans um, a sense of purpose back. They're able to um, improve the quality of life and give them some more of that independence that they've been striving for. Yeah, and he's such a good dog, right? He's I mean, really he's, he's yeah. very well yeah. behaved. That's why we. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we bring him to the ballpark all the time. That's why, and that's why everybody loves him, and he yeah. can mm -hmm. sit where he wants to and chat with whoever he wants to, right? Former Phillies manager Charlie Manuel does his first TV interview since suffering a stroke last September, and he talks with our Pat Gallen. Hear what the skipper has to say about his journey and what helped him on his road to recovery. You don't want to miss it. Welcome to a special edition of A Gallon of Questions here in Clearwater, Florida with the Phillies. I am Pat Gallon. As they say in Philadelphia, if you win, you'll never buy a drink for the rest of your life. And I'd like to imagine thousands of drinks being bought for the one and only Charlie Manuel, one of the greatest people that I've ever gotten a chance to know over the years in my years in media, one of the kindest people in all of baseball. And that's why everyone was so upset when they heard the news back in September of last year that Charlie Manuel had a stroke. Now he's had to work very hard over these last six, seven, eight months to come back from that. There have been some trying times with he and his wife Missy. He's had some steps backwards, some steps forwards, but we know that Charlie Manuel is a fighter. He was that in his time here, his tenure as the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies. And like I said, he won here. You remember it, 2008, 16 years ago, Charlie helped push the Phillies to a World Series title. We will forever be grateful for him for that. Now here in Clearwater, I got a chance to sit down with Charlie and Missy for their first on-camera interview since Charlie's stroke. So great to catch up with them. He had already been in the hospital, so luckily he was, and they were checking out some things with his heart, had a series of tests over the course of a couple of days, which then led to a heart cath, and they, had made the decision that they would, they did go in, they deploy stents if they needed to. Okay. And so during the process of the heart cath, 
the um, cardiologist deployed a stent and they believe that's then what, because there's that risk with heart casts, okay. that, that something gets dislodged, you know, plaque or whatever. Sure. So then he had a stroke on the procedure table. So they noticed that when they were done with the procedure, of course, he sedated. Right. But when they brought him back out and were moving him from the procedure table back into his bed, they noticed he was uh, completely paralyzed on the right side and couldn't talk. So he could understand mm -hmm. what they were like directives they were giving him, but he couldn't move. So things just moved really quickly after that with the critical care team. And they were quickly, I think they told me within not much more than three hours, they had him back in and um, radiology then was able to go in and remove the clot okay. quickly. So because of that, he is, deficits are still there but they were way you know sure not minimal but right so then take me through the next few steps the next few days weeks what was that whole process yeah, like yeah so he's when he comes out of um the procedure to remove the clot he was in ICU and he was intubated okay. so i asked the nurses and during the whole thing i'm asking the nurses is he aware of what's going on? And they said he absolutely knows. And so they talked to him, and we all just had to talk to him to tell him what had happened, but <coughs> that they were helping him, and he would be okay. Sorry. <laughs> that was pretty dramatic sure, and emotional. Sure. That's okay. <laughs> and I cry all the time. So anyway, so they, they took him to ICU, and immediately they just, you know, start pushing him to respond to commands just to evaluate to see what how how he was doing and um, after a couple days then of course he was they took out the uh, breathing tube sure. and he w then waited for just several days till they he was a eventually able to go into inpatient rehab Chuck how scary was this yeah. for you where you were sitting I was uh Actually, I, was, I don't think I was scared. I, got, I, was, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, because I really couldn't re relate to things. Mm. You know, like I was, uh, uh, I couldn't move, I couldn't talk. I mean, I couldn't talk. I, uh, uh, I could, after about a day or two, I could, uh, I, I would just, stuff come out of my mouth like, ah, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I couldn't say nothing. Sure. Uh, and that was flustered, and I could talk, and I get things started going through my hand. Once I realized what was happen had, had happened, I, I felt like it, uh, you know, like I, I couldn't talk and I couldn't walk and things like that. And I was, uh, I got uh, down as far as that, you know, like I, I think I got, <clears throat> I was kind of, uh, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I was I was mad, mad most of the time. And he uh, had a lot of questions. He and, he uh, repeatedly was asking sure. what happened, yeah. and yeah. and yeah. and we would walk him through for yeah. for days. Yeah. He would just be asking about yeah. the stroke and asking specifically what happened in the stroke, and and you could tell he was just trying to just understand exactly, you yeah. know, what had happened to him and. He, he just, right. you know, was yeah. coming out of it and mm -hmm. confused. But luckily, we had a good team too. Of once, once I once I could start to stand up, and uh, and uh, and I noticed my speech was getting better. I mean, I, I still got a good ways to go, but my speech definitely in the last couple months has really uh, come back a lot. Sure. And they say that uh, I got a good chance of getting it back completely. After they said it's going to they take about six months to a year, but uh, uh, and when I started, uh, I get mad sometimes because of when I go to speech class, I had to uh, read sentences. <laughs> I couldn't say any sentences at all, and I had to read them, and it was, it was kind of like. Touch the dog <laughs> 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 and things like that. Yeah. 
and I thought to myself, I used to tell, I tell them, I try to tell Missy, oh, I'm a little boy again. <laughs> I was like that, but sure. but throughout the whole thing, and as soon as as soon as he he was still in ICU and he was watching games, mm-hmm. Phillies games on the iPad, he could not express a lot, but you could just tell him. Yeah. Second guessing and and reacting to the right, game. Right. I mean, and the first, his first talking and really being able to communicate. It was like how clear his memory was and his cognition was as it related to baseball. He might have been confused right. about some other things, Not but baseball. there was nothing <laughs> about baseball that ever left his mind. Sure. It, it, you know, there were a lot of things that. You know, he had to really search to recall, but sure. it, it was pretty interesting how that worked. That was, you know, I guess that being his life, he right. had that just ingrained in his brain. When do you think things started to take a, a positive turn? How, how long did that take? I'd say three, two, two to three, three weeks. Okay. Three weeks yeah. till, you know, that felt really positive for us, right. even though we knew that there was still a long way to go. But it yeah. felt, it felt really encouraging. And when he was in inpatient and the things you might have seen when he was hitting, yeah. like, you know, in, yeah. in rehab, sure. like they were doing those little small things like that to, to keep him engaged. And, and it's really common for p- people post-stroke, you know, to be in, in some form of depression and some level of depression. And he had, you know, some depression about it sure. because obviously his whole life changed dramatically right then. But fortunately now, what are we, six months out or something yeah. maybe that – the things feel relatively normal now. How, things feel. How much do you think baseball helped you through the ordeal? I think it uh, really helped me because, especially in my speech, because uh, for about, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks, uh, I didn't respond to it. I wasn't really, I didn't really care about it. You know, it was, it was useless for me, I thought. And one day, uh, the, the lady uh, was, was teaching me. She brought in uh, uh, history of Babe Ruth, and she was reading to me about it, uh, uh, all of his uh, uh, records and all that stuff. And we got to start talking about baseball, so that's what we talked about. From I never, I never had to have to re- repeat, it, repeat any sentences or verbs or nouns, <laughs> stuff like that. And she, and, oh, and, and, spe- she, and speech therapy. So That's yeah. it, once he got into she, speech yeah, everything therapy. started getting to be in baseball, and, and the Phillies were in the foot playoffs at that time. And uh, but also too, uh, when I first when I first got my voice to talk, this uh, uh, g- girl. Cook, uh, her, her name was uh, uh, Nicole. <laughs> she she uh, told me her name, and I forgot it. And she kept telling me her name, and I, for a couple of days I forgot it. She come in her room and asked me, she said, what's my name? I said, uh, Nicole. And then she would be talking about something, and she would say, what's my name? And, <laughs> And I say Nicole. <laughs> just she grew a little farther. Yeah. Right? I say Nicole, and uh, and I got started. Uh, and my voice, I started getting better, but it, I mean, I was, uh, I mean, still yet I couldn't talk. Sure, sure. But uh, that's when I, but when that lady lady brought out the book about Babe Ruth, she had all these stats written down, and I was telling them what a lot of the stats was. She had she had some players like. Was playing that last year. Yeah. And I basically, that guy came really close to her all, all her hitter stats. And she, so we mostly stayed in baseball. How much did it hurt, though, that you couldn't be around it in the same yeah. way, especially with the Phillies going yeah. on a, another run like they did? Yeah, I was, I was upset because I wanted to be there. I wanted to see it. People, uh, I think uh, some people really don't understand my love for baseball about the fact that. 
I don't care who, who hits, a, hits a home run, who does no, 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 no hit or something like that. I want to be to watch it to see it. Yeah. When guys some hit the ball a long ways on the other team, I used to get them all, all all over my pitcher. I said, Jesus Christ, I didn't think you could throw the ball that far. <laughs> so stuff like that, they would get mad at me. Yeah. Really terrible mad at me. <laughs> So you're back now. Uh, what's it been like being around the team? Uh, I know you had to take a little bit of a break, but nice yeah. being back on the field, yeah. hanging out. Yeah, yeah. It's a little. I'm, I'm a little leery of uh, uh, talking, but at the same same time, yeah, they were, everybody's really treated me good, really, seriously, really. But, but, yeah, except Utley, he. Uh, was eating uh, at, at, at that fantasy camp game when uh, we, we went up to eat. Utley was sitting with me, and he looked at me. I was sitting there, we was talking, and he looked at me and said, uh, I used to hate this you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what? He says, I used to hate you. And I said, what do you mean? He says, you used to make me ride on a bus ride all the time in spring training, <laughs> on, on away games. Away games. Like that. He, said, I, he said, I said, well, how come you didn't say that? And he said, Nah, I didn't cause I didn't want to. I said, uh, I said you, you knew, knew how to put you all on all of them. And he looked at me, he laughed, he said, but that helped me. Sure. Uh, you know, he, said, uh, he said, he said, he thought that, he, he, he went that, he thought that was a, uh, one of the best discipline uh, things that I had on our team. You know, like as far as, you know, like. The yeah, veterans yeah, sending them yeah, to yeah, other, yeah, other exactly. towns. I like that. Missy also yeah. helped you through yeah. quite a bit. Um, yeah, right, right. Missy, yeah. what, what has this been like yeah. for you as, you know, caregiver, helper, uh, confidant, all that? Just a very waking, you know, it's a waking up experience because even though he's been through and I've been with him through a lot of, you know, health issues and medical emergencies, this one just seemed a little bit more profound. True. It's just the brain seems so mysterious and you wonder like exactly what's happening, you know. Fortunately, his cognition wasn't affected, you know. Um, he, he has, you know, some other brain things, but it was, was nothing really as bad as it could have been, sure. but it still was, a uh, and it has been um, just a process of feeling the responsibility of taking care of him right. because, and particularly, I think I feel like a, a a little bit heavier weight. I think because he's so beloved, and I feel like a huge responsibility to protect him and take care of him, which I would no matter who he sure, was. Sure. But it just feels like added pressure, like you know. Yeah. Well, you can haul at me and stuff. <laughs> I, 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 I really try to encourage him to do his PT and yeah. OT and yeah. things at home. And, yeah. and at first, um, sure. you know, I was, I was anxious for him to really work as hard as he possibly could and as hard as I knew he could sure. and how hard he used to coach his players to work uh, that, uh, you know, I did, it was trying to be encouraging, but, a push I, but I would there. kind of get, get, get him, you know, yeah. but it, so it, it was definitely, it's a, it is an emotional process and especially that because he was feeling more vulnerable than he'd ever felt, right. and that felt like him giving up a little bit of his autonomy or independence, right. you know. And so there was a lot of, you know, kind of friction, I guess you would say. say but sure. but nothing that we weren't. We've been together almost thirty years. Like we've we've worked through everything, right. and I just try to be there to support him and let him. Um, um, I want him to still be able to enjoy all the things that he always did before. And so I, I kind of pushed him, realized that really wasn't going to help. And now we have a physical therapist who. <laughs> <laughs> now she comes after you? <laughs> yeah. Missy was, uh, Missy was uh, 
She definitely didn't want me to give up. Yeah, I wasn't going to let him give up. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> she, she, she definitely did. She, That's she, it. She could get all That's her heart it. on me. You're a baseball player, yeah. baseball nut. As a baseball player, you set goals. I'm sure you've got goals now. Yeah. What, what what are they? Yeah. Do, do you have them written out? Do you know what they yeah. are? Actually, I, I want to, I still want to enjoy baseball. Uh, I baseball is something that I think that I'll always be around and things. Uh, uh, and as long as I'm uh, living and things like that, I'm gonna probably stay interested in it. And you know, I go uh, uh, I go to little league games, and things like that. I, uh, people don't even know about that. I just and you know, I'll go, I'll put my hat on and go sunglasses, glasses, and sit down and watch little league games and things, and watch who, who's a good player and stuff like and things like that. And I watch high school games and uh, and of course I watch the big league games too. Sure. I, uh, the last couple of years, uh, uh, Bo and I went. We would probably could probably go on a thirty or forty get big league game. Okay. And uh, Sorry. Uh, and I still have a passion to uh, at least talk uh, the guys about it, uh, baseball. I still still I know I know I can help big guys with their hitting uh, as uh, as far as uh, teach them the. Uh, the Psychological things right. about it, and uh, and I uh, I like to talk to hitting coaches and things like that. You know, I still like running on the game. I can go fishing. I don't know if I can play golf now. <laughs> I used to and things like that. You play pickleball with some of these guys out here soon. <laughs> I can do do different things, but end of the day, I always back back watching the TV, yeah. watching the game if it's on. And then in the summertime, I watch Lehigh Valley and Reading on TV a lot. Mm -hmm. And you uh, know, I'll, I'll, I'll usually have three games on. I'll have Atlanta Dodgers or somebody, some not the good good team, mm -hmm. and they have the Phillies. And I have one of the minor league teams on at the same time. Never stops. <laughs> Never stops. How about your goals? What are your goals for him and for yourself? Well, I'm just hoping for him to. Just stay healthy and get just keep moving forward in his recovery. That's kind of where I'm I'm still Kind of focused on that because I think he still has a little ways to go sure. but you know yeah. just support him in his recovery and and The the fact that baseball has really been the saving grace yeah. for this it really it really has been so I think it's it's very marked how how different his demeanor in his attitude when he was not able to come to the ballpark versus once he can be at the ballpark be around the guys be yeah. around the game sure. it's it's what he needs emotionally and probably now more than ever he needs yeah. it we see you back at the bank this summer yeah, yeah some point in time you know we don't yeah. Yeah. we don't yeah. have plans now but you know yeah. we're just working through it one day at a time and see yeah. sure you know yeah. See what happens. Just keep him, keep him moving. Yeah, that's the thing. He turned eighty, and that just doesn't seem like right. a big deal. He kind of sounds like okay, he's eighty, but I don't feel like he's ready to stop. Sure. You know, and I don't think there's anything that should keep him from stopping because it's what he loves to do. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. talk, before we go, talk about the shirt. What's uh... Homers for Philadelphia is for homers. We have a new shirt too. We'll have to keep an eye on the new the new gear. Yeah, the new the new one is uh, a little means a lot. That's yeah. one of his best uh, uh, like. All the years of Charlieism. When I, yeah. when I talk when I when I talk about hitting, I always say little means a lot. A little means a lot. How you hold your bat, a little bit, and what you do with it, things like that. Also, in your weight shift, everything you do. It's got to be, got to be on t time. Sure. It's, it's a balance rhythm, and and it's just being always ready, and being ready to hit and things like like that. Sure. So you know, like it all means a lot. So great to catch up with Charlie and Missy. Thank you so much for joining us here on a gallon of questions from Clearwater with the Phillies. I'm Pat Gallon. We'll talk to you next time.
Thanks for watching First Pitch here on CBS News Philadelphia. If you're enjoying the show, download our app on your Apple TV, Roku TV, Smart TV, or streaming device to catch us every day. Don't you go anywhere. There's much more to come here on CBS News Philadelphia.